For all of you collectors out there, I have got a challenge for us all. Let's talk about it. What is going on, everybody? And welcome to week number three of our collection update series. I am absolutely loving doing these little collection updates. I love getting in new cards, new products, sealed product, whatever. It's a really fun time to look through it together with you guys. Now, for the first couple weeks, we had a lot of sealed product and only a couple of single cards. However, this week is gonna be very different. We've got absolutely no sealed product, and instead we're gonna be looking at some singles that I would love to share with you guys. Now, to make this a little more interesting, interesting and give us that kind of end goal of okay what are we trying to accomplish I have a little goal for us or a little challenge if you will that I think is going to be a really fun thing for us to do together for this challenge we are going to be completing a full binder of awesome singles that I just love to collect they're fun cards that I just think are really cool to have in my collection and I'd love to share that with you guys so for me what I have decided to do is pick up a 12 pocket this thing is massive a 12 pocket 480 card ultra pro binder zipper padded front and back absolutely amazing binder now each page here does have 12 pockets and therefore each week we're going to be taking a look at 12 new singles that have been added to the binder and hopefully build up the collection long term with that in mind the end goal is to actually complete the binder and at some point we get to look at it together all the way through once it's done and just take a look at some of the historic moments that we've seen on this series over that course of time now here is where you come in because what I would love to do is share this experience with you guys but on a more personal level and invite you to join me in completing a binder of your choice. Now that binder could be a 12 pocket just like mine, but if you wanna go a bit smaller, you can do the nine pocket, you can do the four pocket, whatever you see fit. I don't want anybody to be put out based on this kind of thing, but I do think it'd be really fun to look at collections together, build collections together, and share some of those awesome cards that we get to pick up. Now with that in mind, the method for how you choose the singles you pick up or any of the cards that you decide to buy is completely up to you. One thing to note, this could even be a binder you already have almost completed. You've just got a couple more slots to fill out. That is okay. I don't want anybody to feel like they have to spend tons and tons of money on this. I just think it would be a fun experience because we're so naturally geared towards collecting with Magic the Gathering that we can build our collections together and then talk about some of the awesome cards and share those cards in the comment section below. So for you guys, as you happen to pick up some awesome new cards, please feel free to share those in the comment section. Give me a little story, just a couple sentences about how you found it, why you got it, why it's a card that you wanted to add to the collection, anything like that. I would love to hear your stories about your collections. Now, without further ado, we're gonna jump into the 12 new singles that we are adding to the collection this week. This is starting off our 12 pocket binder. We've got 480 cards to go. Let's look at the first 12. All right, guys, we are going to talk about these one by one, and we're actually going to start with one that we showcased in the last episode of the collection update. Yes, it is Teferi's Puzzle Box. The reason I'm including this is because this is our first card for the binder, and so I wanted to make sure we took another look at it, included it on the page that it deserves. Uh, Teferi's Puzzle Box, again, a beautiful card. I love the secret layer version. I feel like this is a very unique addition to the collection, which is why I picked it up. I love these alternate artworks, just these really special things that we don't normally get to see. Uh, and I know, you know, secret layers uh, are a little overdone, we'll say at this point. And so I do understand that some people get a little bit tired of them and I, I get it, but uh, I do really just love the artwork on this. I love the geometry of it all. Uh, it just looks beautiful. So for me, this was a, a pretty easy inclusion and definitely one that I wanted to have here. Uh, just awesome. Card number two is actually one that we opened in a pack, and I did not show this anywhere, including our Instagram. I have started sharing some of the cards that we'll see in these collection updates on Instagram, uh, as well as Twitter and things like that. But we actually, there's a funny story behind this Perforos. So uh, first of all, this is pack fresh. Like I said, we opened this out of a Theros pack. What's interesting is I initially bought four packs of Theros to include in the collection. Uh, and when I got them, I noticed that the actual pack itself was kind of see-through. Like, you could literally hold it up to the light and see the first common and that kind of stuff. Uh, and so I was a little skeptical that they were, you know, not necessarily legit. I did get them TCG Player Direct, though, so I was like, okay, I mean, they have to be somewhat validated. So I did end up opening them up, but after the fact, I looked it up, and apparently, depending on where you store certain packs, 
during that Theros to like Fate Reforged era, uh, some of the packs can get a little more see-through than others, which is kind of interesting. But uh, we opened up as part of that a Perforos God of the Forge, which is just an amazing pull. Uh, it actually came with a foil in the pack too, but it was just a common, so I'm not including it. But absolutely beautiful card uh love the gods in theros i think that's a really good set overall it also had things like thought seas and stuff so uh sad to not have the sealed packs as part of my collection however i am very happy to be opening up that perforos again just a stunning stunning card beautiful artwork the only thing that would make it better if, if it was foil but uh that would be asking a lot i think Next up, and speaking of foils, we have got one of my favorites of the binder so far. This is a beautiful foil promo for Wrath of God. Now, uh, I've talked about before how much of a sucker I am for a good promo. This is one of my favorites, uh, genuinely. Uh, the fact that it is textless full art is absolutely stunning. I do have quite a number of like game day promos, things like that. Uh, in my collection, which maybe we'll talk about at some point. We can take a look back at that. But uh, this is a beautiful addition. This is actually the first of the foil ones that I actually own. Uh, and so it's really cool to see that here. Again, just absolutely stunning artwork. Wrath of God, just a, a fantastic card and a classic card at that as well. Uh, and so to see it here in the collection is just an absolute awesome treat. Uh, and again, that it's so unique. I love unique cards. That's that's really my uh, my Achilles heel in collecting is just saying, oh, that's cool. It's got a little stamp on it or something like that. Uh, but I do really love this one. Great addition to the collection. And uh, yeah, just a stunning card. Next up, we have another promo from the Theros era. Uh, and this is actually Hall of Triumph promo from, I believe it's Journey into Nyx. So uh, Hall of Triumph is actually quite a good card in my opinion. So you choose a color creatures you control of the chosen color, get plus one, plus one. Three mana artifact fits into any deck, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, and again, this is the alternate artwork. So I, I really do like promos. I love picking up alternate artworks and things like that. This is one of those. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have a ton of value. Um, and I think uh, while we're, we're talking about this, one thing that I want to point out to you guys, if you do happen to join along in this binder uh, completion challenge, whatever you want to call it, um, you don't have to get crazy powerful cards. You could be collecting the same common 480 times if you go with the 12 pocket binder, and that's okay. Every collection is unique, and I think that's the special thing about collecting is you know, yeah, there's value in it, and that's super cool, and that that in itself is something to be proud of, but I think importantly, uh, you can just be proud of the collection you have, even if it's just a bunch of commons, just from starter decks or something like that. It doesn't matter. Your, your unique collection is your unique collection, and so uh, if you decide to, you know, join us on this little expedition of finishing out binders just for the fun of it, um, don't feel like you have to spend tons of money on it. Just get cards that you like to get. That's all you ever have to do. There's also no time limit. So you can just take as long as you want. You could never finish it and that is okay. Uh, the goal of this is just to enjoy the collecting aspect of magic uh, and hopefully do it together and share some of those exciting cards. So again, this is a great example of a card that doesn't have a lot of value, but is still a little bit unique. And that's why I included it here in my uh, my binder because I do just love alternate artworks and, and promos like this. Now we are going to take a trip down the olden days of magic. Not our oldest card, surprisingly, that we'll be looking at today, but we do have an old school, I believe revised Howling Mine. Uh, Howling Mine is actually quite a powerful card. Each player may, must draw one extra card during their draw phase for each of his or her turns. Uh, very cool card, two mana artifact, fits into a lot of strategies, especially in Commander. You can kind of get people with things like Nekusar and stuff like that. Uh, and I really love that. Uh, I love the old school artwork. They do have a promo version of this with the new frame but old artwork, which I do kind of want to pick up. Uh, and we may actually have another revised one coming here soon. But this is my first old school Howling Mine. I've actually picked up a lot of these in Commander decks and things like that. I don't love the newer artwork. It's just not my favorite. And so for me, having this old school uh, version of the card, while it's not the original printing, is still a really exciting thing to add to the collection. And it does hold a little bit of value, so it is worth it in the long term, I think, as well. But uh, again, just a beautiful card, really powerful card as well and uh, certainly a great addition to, uh, to the binder. 
All right, jumping into some more promos. We've got a couple more here. The first one being Ramanop Excavator. This is funny enough, not my favorite art, but uh, I do still love this card. This is basically Crucible of Worlds on a stick, uh, which allows you to play land cards from your graveyard. Now, Ramanop Excavator, not in my opinion, quite as good as Crucible of Worlds. Uh, but uh, the reason being, it's just so easy to kill, by the way. You can you can bolt it, you can do whatever. Uh, it's a creature, so it's easier to kill. But uh, it is a really powerful card. And again, the promo is absolutely stunning. De regardless of the fact that the artwork isn't my favorite, it's a little bit like, eh. Um, but I do love the stamping. I do collect a lot of the stamped uh, cards. So this one being from July 2017. Uh, really love that. Um, but in general, I just thought this was a really cool card. I love Ramanop Excavator as a card. And so to have it in promo, this is my first one of the promos. Uh, it's just a treat. It's a nice little treat. Again, not a super valuable card, but, uh, certainly a nice addition and a really pretty card. I love foils and things like that. So to add these into the binder, just it always makes you feel a little bit good, you know? Another promo and one that I actually do love the artwork on. I posted this on Instagram earlier in the week. Sylvan Carry added from Pharos. A lot of Theros block this time. Uh, a 0-3 wall with Defender and Hexproof, and then you can add one mana to your mana pool, so it is a mana dork. What I love about this, though, one, it's just a cool card. I love it. the uh, Jeskai Ascendancy deck, if anybody remembers that from modern days. Um, this was actually a pretty key card in it because of the Hexproof. Uh, it allowed you to kind of do a lot of stuff with it and uh, build some counters up and then throw it at the opponent. Uh, a really powerful card in that right. Uh, but more importantly than that, I think, is this amazing, amazing artwork on this. The perspective of this piece of work is really stunning, in my opinion. The fact that it's on a tilted axis, so you get this kind of really skewed view of the artwork, is just something that I think is phenomenal. I love when artists decide to do that. <clears throat> and because of, you know, the, the straightforward kind of 90 degree angle, rigid uh, horizontal vertical lines on a, an updated magic card, uh, it's really nice to see something that kind of tilts out of that a little bit and gives you a little bit of a different perspective. And so you, you're you looking up at this like really interesting, weird, like vine thing. I don't know. But anyway, this is just a really cool card in my opinion. And that's why I picked it up again. Not necessarily super crazy value, but uh, it is just an absolutely stunning card. And to have it here is really, really cool. All right, guys, our last promo of the day is all the way back from Alara, Knight of New Alara, again, with that beautiful little April 2009 stamp. Uh, again, alternate artwork, which I do love. It's got the beautiful Alara Reborn uh, text in the actual card frame, which I think is super unique. I love when, when they do that. Uh, and again, it's the alternate artwork that I'm after. I love things like that. Uh, and so there are a number of promos that you will see throughout this series uh, that may not have crazy value, anything like that. This doesn't have a whole lot of nostalgia for me. Uh, it's just a really pretty card in my opinion. And so sometimes that's kind of enough. Like Sylvan Carry added does have a little bit of nostalgia. I've played with that card. Knight of New Alara, I did not play with. Uh, I just think it's a really pretty card. Uh, and it is actually kind of interesting. Uh, each multicolored creature you control gets plus one, plus one for each of its colors. I do kind of like that. Uh, and so for me, there's there's some value to this long term, maybe. Uh, but for me, it's just a pretty card, and that's why I have it. All right, so the last cards are much older uh, for the most part. And so no more promos for the day, but we do have a Chronicles Nickel Bolus. And this is actually a twofer for me. So this is a card I used to have, but it's also a card that I sold a long time ago. Uh, it's not super valuable, but I sold my collection and this was part of it. Uh, the important thing though for me is this is a card that I need to finish Chronicles. I've only got like less than 10 cards left in Chronicles that I need to actually complete the entire set. Now Chronicles is not a super pricey set. This is one of the more expensive cards in the set, uh, aside from like Concordant Crossroads, I guess, and Blood Moon maybe, uh, which I do have both of those. And so this was just a card that I needed to complete the set, uh, but it's also a really cool card. Uh, Nicol Bolas, the OG villain, not OG, I guess, technically, but one of the big villains in, in the history of Magic, obviously wrapped up that storyline just a few years ago uh, and so to see the original version of the card is absolutely hilarious because how 
of how bad it is. <laughs> uh, these old school Elder Dragon legends were not very good. Uh, we did get a few new versions recently in the last couple of years, which I like, but I love the old school cards. And so this was just completing the set, hopefully getting some more of those cards in soon. Uh, but I just absolutely love OG Nicol Bolas, so I had to pick him up. Uh, looks a little silly, though, just sitting there reading his book. <laughs> Uh, down to the oldest card in the set this time, we have got Giant Spider from Beta. Beta Giant Spider. Now, uh, I did post this one up on our Instagram, and this is actually one that, you know, triggers a few people. If you have arachnophobia, I'm so sorry. Uh, but it's an absolutely awesome classic card. Uh, Giant Spider's been reprinted I don't know how many times. Uh, but it's an absolute awesome card to add to the collection. I don't have much beta stuff. We'll see some additions of beta stuff throughout the, the series, I am sure. Um, but it is really cool to pick up these old school cards. The only other card I have, I believe, I've got some lands and I have a giant growth. Uh, but adding beta cards to the collection just feels so good, regardless of what the card is. I mean, you got to think this is just a common card from beta. It's not really, you know, anything super special, but the fact that it's from beta and the history around this card is what's so fascinating to me. And yeah, I hate spiders too, but uh, to add it to the collection, to add such an old school vintage uh, feel to the collection is something that's really unique. And so to, to add this is really awesome. Uh, again, not a card I'm going to play uh, in any deck. It's terrible. I don't want to play it. Um, however, uh, it's just unique and it's a really cool addition. So I'm, I'm happy to have that here. Down to the last two guys and another old one we have got all the way back from, I believe, Arabian Nights. We've got the little ogre here. This guy is hilarious to me. It's a little 2-2 two -two for one, uh, which honestly in the old school days of magic is pretty awesome. Uh, but during its current controller's upkeep, the player with the highest life total you, uh, control takes control, excuse me, of the ogre. So this is one of those things that kind of passes back and forth in ownership as you go through the game, which is just really interesting to me. Um, it's a really interesting mechanic that I don't think we have seen a lot of since. I, I can think of one or two cards that do pass control on their own, uh, but this was the OG. Uh, and this is a nice little aggressive green creature. It's kind of funny because nowadays when you think two, two for one, you think like goblin guide or uh, things generally in red, I would suggest. Uh, and so to see it in green is kind of interesting, but again, just an old card, something uh, that has a little bit of value maybe, but like is really just cool to see. I love historic magic cards, and so this is certainly one of those that I, uh, I'm happy to pick up. And finally, guys, we come to the last card and potentially my favorite from this first page of our binder. We have got Smokestack. So Smokestack uh, is a pretty mean card, if you guys don't know. It's an artifact for four mana during your upkeep. You may put a soot counter on smokestack. Crucially, you may. You don't have to. Uh, but during each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a permanent for each soot counter on smokestack. Uh, and so the goal of this is to get the opponent to really drain their own resources by playing stuff out, having to sacrifice it, and you hopefully taking advantage of the fact that you can throw out a lot of extra permanents. Uh, just a really classic card. One of those cards that it, it does have its own deck. The stacks deck is a thing in uh, old school magic. Uh, and so to see it here is a really awesome thing. I don't normally get to pick up cards like this. Um, it does hold a little bit of value, uh, but I just don't normally pick up things like this. That's just kind of a normal card, but does, you know, a lot of interesting stuff. And so for me, this is a really interesting include and one of my favorite artifacts. And so uh, really, really happy to have this. Just a, a really special time. You know what I mean? This is a really special card in my opinion. So it's great to have it here. And uh, yeah, that's the collection. Let's jump into the wrap up, guys. All right, guys, so with that, we have completed page number one of our binder. We'll hopefully have a couple of graphics up, kind of keeping track of the price of the entire binder and that kind of stuff as we go through these uh, these episodes. But that's a really special start, in my opinion. We've got a lot of cool cards, a lot of unique cards, and a lot of things that, again, you just don't get to see every day. And so that's what this is about, guys. Again, I really want to encourage you, if you're if you're collecting or if you are interested in collecting magic, please join us in this uh, this little initiative that we're kind of launching here to uh, to finish a binder together. Uh, it doesn't matter how you finish it. It could be whatever cards you want to add to your personal collection, but share those with us in the comments section. Share your stories about why you collect the cards you collect. Uh, and again, this is 
this is a passion project for me more so than I want a lot of views on this. Uh, and so for me, this is just a really special series to do and hopefully share with even just one or two of you guys. Uh, and so I do want to say a huge thank you to everybody watching this series. It really is something special for me. Uh, and so thank you all very, very much. I do appreciate it. I love you all very much. I hope you enjoy collecting just as much as I do. I hope you enjoy seeing these really old, unique, special cards uh, that get added to the binder every single week. But man, what, a, what an awesome episode. What a great start to this. So thank you guys so much. Again, I really appreciate you all. Have a fantastic day. Have a great weekend. I'll see you again very soon.